Stop praying for things that you're not sure about. And only pray for those things that you are sure about. Again, ask it for anything according to His will. Wait until you know that you know what you know and you're knower that this is the will of God for you, that heaven has assigned this to you. Okay, Genesis 8.22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. I want to focus my message today on, on you know, it says seed time and harvest. I want to focus my message today on these three things. Seed, time, and harvest. Everybody say seed, seed. time, time and harvest. And so I, I want to just give you the process of how I receive from the Lord any time. I mean, pa what Pastor Freddie did at the, I mean, he, you just, you just, unbeknownst to you, just introduced this message because, because what is it uh, that God has put on your heart to receive from the Lord? How many of you have a dream, a vision, or something or a need in your life that you want, you want God to meet. Okay, it's this process of anything that you receive from the Lord. Now, now look, you can receive from God through the gifts of the Spirit or somebody else praying for you. God loves you enough where, you know, he'll, the gifts of the Spirit can release things to you through other people's faith and just because God has mercy on you. But I'm talking about not, you can't depend on that though and you can't stay healed or set free or whatever through the prayers of other people alone. You have to learn how to grow up and that's what, that's what the, this, the vision of this church is about is to connect you with God and you belong to the, to the family but then you grow up and mature so that you can touch other people, right? But how are you going to grow up and mature if you can't take care of yourself? If you're all the time calling a prayer line and you know, look, I, we've got a, my ministry's got a, a prayer line and uh, Andrew Womack ministry's got a prayer line. I, it's not that I would never call a prayer line, but guys, it's time. I mean, isn't it, isn't your desire for your, for your children, Josiah, to grow up one day where you're not having to change their diapers, where you're not having to clean up their messes, where, where you're not having to, to feed them, you're not having to do all that stuff. My, listen, one, one of our greatest days, now my wife and I have been married 50 year, over 50 years. She was 12, I was 13. <laughs> Not really, she was 18, I was 19. But, but um, our, our happiest day after we got married was when our, our first child was born. Then our, our next and, and better happiest day was when our last child left the home. <laughs> That was a wonderful, glorious day, because we were we were became empty nesters because we're still best friends. Okay, but I mean you're you're raising up children, right? Natural children to grow up and to become adults and mature and to take care of themselves. Is that true? And to and to depend on God and not on mom and dad. And some of you mamas need to cut the apron string. And let baby grow. And let baby watch Frozen and let baby go. <laughs> That's a word for somebody. <laughs> let it go, let it go. <laughs> I've watched Frozen with my grandchildren. Oh man. So, uh, but this is what, the process of what I'm sharing with you this morning is this is what God has taught me about how I can be sure to receive from God every time, myself, where I don't have to depend on someone else. I'm dependent on God. And look, I'm not saying I'm above calling somebody. And I mean, there in 2016, I had double pneumonia and sepsis, and and uh, there were a lot of people standing in the gap praying for me because I wasn't. I mean, my wife primarily, but because I wasn't myself. You know, and so there are times we need that. But guys, the bottom line is, and, we, and that's why we need the family of God, 
But the bottom line is, we overall, we need to take care of ourselves. And we need to receive from God ourselves. And we need to take, we need to take our toddler pants off, put our big boy and big girl pants on, take our thumb out of our mouth, and we need to grow up. And that's what Pastor Freddie and Terrilyn are doing here. They're raising up a generation of people that are, that are mature Christians that can help with the babies. Yeah? Amen. So, everybody say seed, seed. Time, time, harvest. So here's my question. Let's talk about seed first. Have you sown the seed of God's Word in your heart for the desire, for the harvest you desire to see? Have you taken the time to, to sow the seed of God's Word in your heart for the harvest that you desire to see in your life? See, God's Word is a huge seed bag that contains seed that will produce a harvest for every imaginable thing that you need in this life and the life to come. Can, but, but can you imagine a farmer praying for a harvest without planting seed? Could you imagine that? Could you imagine a gardener praying for tomatoes when all that he or she has planted is squash seed? Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. Yet so many people come forward for prayer because they're putting confidence in someone else's ability to pray. And, and many times what I do, uh, Pastor Freddie and Terrell, what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop them and, and I'll ask them, what scripture are you standing on? What, what verse has God quickened to your heart that you planted in your heart that you're standing on as a basis for your prayer to be answered. Are, are you hearing me? Now, I know this is simplistic, but it's so real and it's, and it's so prevalent in the body of Christ today is we're, come, we're, we're asking other people to pray for us and, and it's like we're asking for a harvest we've never planted seed. In the whole kingdom of God, Jesus said it works like a man put, put casting seed in the ground. What kind of seed are you planting in your heart? You know, are you, are you planting doubt and unbelief and worry and, and, and what everybody else is saying and the, and, and the you know, the Ten Spies Network and, and, and all kinds of stuff? Or are you planting the Word of God? I remember Barry Bennett was, uh, had, went through a cancer battle. A good friend of mine, he's an instructor at Karis Bible College along with me and and he, we went through a cancer battle for about a year and a half. And Janice would, we went over to their house and prayed for, prayed with them and stood with them. And and Janice would text Betty Kay, his wife, and I would reach out to Barry. And and then there were time, there were you know, uh, uh, there were times when I called. He said, "Man, Greg," he said, "I'm not myself." He said, "It really, it really, uh, it blesses me that you called today. It's really encouraging me that you called today." But in all that conversation, I asked Barry, what has God spoken to you? What has He quickened to your heart? And He gave me Romans 8, Romans 8, 11, and, and some other verses, and I just, and I just began to uh, help water that seed with Him and agree with Him in prayer uh, for that. It says, but if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, how many of you are born again? then the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. The resurrection life of Jesus will work in you, but how it, how it works, my brother and sister, where, where you can count on it working every time, is for you to take time yourself, feed yourself on the Word of God, and, and, and let God quicken a verse to your heart and plant that in, the, in your heart, and you will reap a harvest. Now certainly we can, again, we can pray for people, and, and God will use our faith to help bring healing to people, but they can't, or blessing to people, but they can't stay blessed, and they can't stay healed. Well, why? Because if they don't get in the Word themselves, the devil will come back and steal it from them. Are you hearing me? 
The devil's real, real out there, guys. It's not God that's holding out on us. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, and that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Well, what is His will? It's His Word, right? So if you ask anything according to His Word, He hears us, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've, we've asked Him. Look, if it was the will, if the will of God was automatic, why would we have to ask for it? When we're asking, all we're saying is we're planting. Well, asking is one way to plant the seed. Or, or just confessing it. Or, and then thank you, like Pastor Freddie said this morning, thanking God for it. But the bottom line is, have you taken the time to find out God's will about the harvest that you want in your life? And I know, again, this is very simple, but guys, this is how I live. This is how we, this is how we grow up and mature. Right? I, nobody, nobody had to tell me I had to brush my teeth this morning and comb whatever hair I have left and, 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 and to get dressed and, 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 and then drive here. I mean, wh why? I'm, I'm, a, I'm an adult. I'm mature. I'm, I, you know, and guys, if we're, going to, if we're going to grow up and how many of you want to be an adult that other people, uh, maybe other babies could depend upon, right? Okay, and then you've got to know the will, will of God, and that's the Word of God. And if, look, if you don't, but if you don't ask according to His will or His Word, He's not going to hear you. He said, if, you, if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. So you can see, if, he, if you don't ask according to His will, there's no guarantee you, He even heard you, unless that request is in line with His Word. Amen? Amen. And, and so, so and, then you, and then you won't receive your harvest. How many of you want to receive a harvest? Okay. If you take time to find out God's will from His Word, and you plant the Word in His heart, He's always going to hear you, and you can be confident your requests will, will be granted. There, there will be a harvest as long as you don't go dig that seed up. Abraham, you don't want to dig the seed up. How do you dig the seed up? Well, I just don't know if it's working. I just don't know if I, I mean, you haven't seen it come in pass in a while. Well, let me just go dig it up and see if it's working. What, what, what would happen if you planted something and then you, you, didn't, see the, you didn't see it come up, but you, you, it's, it's developing a root system and you go dig it up? You're killing it with unbelief. You're killing it with all your questions. Look, it did, did, you, did you find the word that, you, that, that, that promises you the harvest? Then plant that, and then what you do is you water it with thanksgiving and praise. As Pastor Freddie said this morning, he was like, man, this, was, this is awesome. He set this message up. It's awesome. Planting, your, planting his word in your heart involves meditating on it and imagining it being fulfilled in your life, in other words, where you begin to see yourself in that with that harvest. Are you, are you with me? Where you see the prayer answered. You meditate on it until it's real to you, so real to you, you can actually see it. You can imagine it. I'm not talking about just wishing upon a star. I'm talking about, you know, getting the word planted in your heart and meditating on it until you can see that happening. There's somebody here who's believing God for a mate. You're single and you're believing God for a mate. Listen, you need to see that God's got the best for you. Don't take sec don't say don't settle for second best. Amen. God's got the best for you. Throw your list away. I shared this at Karis Bible College yesterday. Throw your list away. Jesus couldn't even meet up to the standard of some of your lists. You got a big, this big long list of everything. You just look. Do they love Jesus more than you? Do they love Jesus more than you? Do do they uh, do they have godly character? 
How do they talk about people who are in authority? How do they submit to their pastors? How do they, how do they treat people on the job? How do they treat their parents? How do they talk about their exes from Texas? You know, do, are, do they have got, do, and then do they have a job? And then not too many in the same year, right? And then are you attracted to them? Okay, anyway, that's really all. And, and, and see yourself. Let God show you what is it you want. What, did he's, what is it that He's put in your heart? I've, I've, uh, I think maybe it was last year, the year before when I was here, you know, I, God had a, a house for somebody. In fact, I, somebody came and told me that God got them, uh, God had a car for someone, and they, and they, got, the, they got the cars paid for. Well, well you got to see yourself. If that's a desire you have, God, He said He, he, he gives us goodly houses. How's us? And then, and, and then uh, the inheritance of, of uh, fathers are, are, are riches and, and, and good things. And, and so it's like, man, you, I've got, man, I, he's my spiritual father. God's my father. And so he's got good, good things for me. He's got a good house for me. He's got a good house for you. And he said, it's, he said if you don't work, you don't eat. So he's got a job for you. A better job for you, or a, or a or a business for you. What does he look? What does he put in your heart? And then, do you have scripture that lines up with that? Have you taken the time? And you could just you could go get. I've got a few. I'm not trying to sell books, but I've got a few scriptures to live by out there that just got categories of scripture. But but you could just look in the Strong's Concordance yourself. Don't buy the book, but just get, the, get in the Word. That's the point. And, and then spend time in the Word yourself until God quickens, the answer, quickens a verse to you and you plant that in your heart and don't dig it back up. And I'm telling you, you will receive that harvest. What is it that you want? What is it that... And Pastor Freddie, ask it this morning. Listen, family, what is, what is God... What desire he's put, has he put in your heart? Well, I'm, in, I'm taking another step and telling you, take responsibility and be a, be a mature Christian and you go study the Word out yourself and find out what God says about that and let God quicken a verse to you. Are you hearing me? Take time to search the Word yourself. Grow up. Feed yourself. Thank God for, we need, look, we need the family of God and we need to be fed by our pastor, okay? But that's just, if that's the only time you're getting fed, you're going to be, you're going to be one skinny Christian. <laughs> by the looks of this place and a few of you, you haven't missed too many meals. <laughs> right? We, we, need to be, we need to become self-feeders, guys. Are you hearing me? Uh, John 3.27 says, A man can receive nothing unless it's been given to him from heaven. I don't want anything. So I'm not talking about selfishness and greed here. I'm not, I don't want anything that heaven hasn't uh, assigned to me, but I want everything that God has for me. I want it all. I want, the, I want the whole enchilada. I want the full meal deal. Yeah? I'm mean, God, what do you have for me? And I'm going for that then. I, every, the whole deal, not just part of it. And then here's how you receive it, Matthew 7, 7. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be opened to you. So here's what God showed me about that verse. Uh, that, that's Jesus in red saying that. Ask for what you're sure about that God has promised you. Either a desire He's put in your heart that lines up with the Word or a promise from the Word. Ask for what you're sure about. If you, if you want to stop confusing your prayer life, stop praying for things that you're not sure about. And only pray 
for those things that you are sure about. Again, ask it for anything according to His will. Wait until you know that you know what you know in your knower that this is the will of God for you, that heaven has assigned this to you. You know, God's called Pastor Freddie and Terrellyn to pastor this church, not, not you. And you, might, and you might have a, some wisdom or knowledge that you could help them with, but you know, I can't tell you, Janice and I have pastored for 27 years, I can't, I, don't, I can't even count the number of times that somebody come up to me over those 27 years, 24 were in one place, and told us how to build a church, and they haven't built anything. Now, so listen, I'm, gonna, I'm wide open to your ideas and stuff, but, but you know, God, I'm the pastor of this church. And God's called me to pass. I'm going to listen to your ideas, but, you know, pray for us, okay, that we'll hear from God. But ask for what you're sure about. Seek Him about what you're not sure about. Don't be praying for things that you're just seeking God about His will on that. You can, other than just, God, would you show me if that's your will? And then, and then, be persistent and knock. I'm not talking about knocking on heaven's door. You're just being persistent. You're like a bulldog. You don't let go of what you know God has shown you. This is the will of God. Amen? Knowing God's word related to your request, it's going to give you assurance if you plant it in your heart and you do that by praying it or by saying it and then by meditating on it until the promise becomes more real to you than the reality of your present circumstance. A, a number of years ago, my, my son Michael, who is my, our um, ministry's television producer, and he's Andrew Womack's, uh, he's a, he's a uh, super, he's a, what, what is his, senior producer of Andrew's daily television. If any of you have ever watched Andrew Womack's my son produces that, okay? And he, I mean, he, Andrew used to come to my church every year uh, for, since 1991. And then he took, we, we took him out to lunch and he took interest in my children. And, um, and, and he was asking Michael one day, he said, Michael, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm studying radio, television, and film at University of North, North Texas. And he said, well, uh, he, he said, well, really? He said, well, if you, when you graduate, call me. I'll give you a job. And he started Josiah as, a, as an editor. And now he's the senior producer of his daily program. But when, he was, when Michael was 15 months old, he had a debilitating muscular arthritic condition. His joints would swell up twice their size. It, where he, when he was 15 months old, he was almost walking. And all of a sudden, just like that, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't crawl. He would cry all the time. I mean, he was in excruciating pain. We took him to the doctors. The doctors gave it some long name and said, if this progresses, he, he'll, he won't ever walk again, or he won't walk, and uh, he'll, he won't live past 10 years old. And so we got serious, and we just, God told me, I want you to immerse yourself in, in, in my word. And so we found three categories of scripture. One on healing, a cat, a cat, I mean, several scriptures on healing, on the integrity of God's Word, and on the authority of the believer. And those, those are what I've, that's how I started my book, um, Scriptures to Live By. And we, so there were 70 of them that we found. Nothing magical about that number. We, that's how many we found in the Strong's Concordance. And we just quoted those over Michael several times a day, okay? And in fact, I have, a, I have a few of the uh, CDs back here for anyone that wants to sign up for our mailing list that are the actual scriptures we quoted over Michael. And for two months, we quoted those, played it on a cassette tape over him, and then after two months, one of those verses leapt off of the page into our hearts. Psalm 119, 89 and 90, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, and your faithfulness is unto Michael and his generation. That doesn't even seem like a healing verse. It was an integrity of God's word verse. But that, that verse quickened to our heart 
And then Janice had a vision of Michael running around the corner saying, Mama, Mama, Mama. He couldn't even crawl. And then a month later, he crawled. Three months later, he walked. Six months later, he ran. And he, ran, he, he was faster than his older brother. He needed to be. <laughs> but Michael is healed today, guys, because we, we took the time to feed ourselves and, and, and speak the Word of God and pray that Word, and, and, then, and it resulted in my son being well in the harvest of his healing. Guys, whatever it is, whatever it is that you need, there's a verse for you. God's Word will deliver you. That's why I love this church is because this is, you know, Word Life Church. You, you, you guys, it's, it's the Word that brings life. Yes? And, and your pastors are preaching and ministering the Word. But guys, what has God quickened to you? Are you hearing me? And then everybody say seed. seed. Then I've got the airport in sight. Okay, we're, we're going to land here in just a little bit. No, number two, everybody say time. So Hebrews 6.12 says that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. So in, in 2 Peter 1, 5 and 6, it says, add to your faith patience. So I, I like to... Uh, use the illustration of, of faith and patience to like, uh, like deep sea fishing or you're fishing for big fish. Okay, when you hook a big fish, you know, if you're deep sea fishing, you know, or we, we've been up to Canada to fish. My, my brother hooked this big 20-pound northern pike, and, and, uh, but he yanked on it too quickly, and I, I, thought, I thought it was a log, and it started, the log started moving. I mean, this fish was huge, and because he yanked on it too quickly, it broke the line, and he, and he went on. And so many times what we do is we try to yank the, the big dream or vision into, into the boat too quickly, and, and we don't make patience our friend, because we say, well, I'm just not a patient person. That's a lie from hell. Patience is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Jesus, uh, God is love, and as He is, so are we. God is love, and love is first patient. Love is first. God is love, and as He is, God is love, and love is first. So as He is, so you're patient. Don't give me that garbage that you're not patient. Okay, you're just yielding to your flesh when you're not patient. You can outlast the devil every time. The devil doesn't have patience. But if you want to bring a big dream, a big vision, or that harvest in, you have to have patience. Okay, how long does it take uh, for a, a, a farmer that's going to bring in a crop? How many of you ever farmed or gardened or whatever? All right, you put that seed in the ground. How long does it take? Is it going to be a, a, a couple of days or a week or a month? It's usually several months, right? How many of you ladies have ever birthed a child? You had to conceive the child first, right? That's the fun part. Conceive it, well, at least, anyway, that's the fun part. Hopefully for both of you. <laughs> but you can, okay, just when you conceive the child is not when you birth the child. What happens if that child is born at eight months? It can have problems. What about seven months? What about six months? And there's a lot of spiritual miscarriages in the body of Christ because we're not patient. We've made patience our enemy. And God said, if you're going to have a harvest, it's seed time. And if you try to bring it in too fast, guys, it's not going to work. Are you hearing me? Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you desire, ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. You believe you receive when you believe the word and you know you shall have. That's future tense. There's almost always, an a, there's almost always time between the amen and the manifestation. Are you hearing me? So, so many things I could share there, but 
Hebrews 10, 35 and 36, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of patience or endurance, so that after you've done the will of God, you'll receive the promise. So that means you've got to remain confident that you planted the seed in your heart, and it, it's incorruptible seed. God's Word is incorruptible. It will produce a harvest if you don't dig it up with unbelief. Are you hearing me? And so the writer of the Hebrews is telling us, don't give up. I, I shared it. Quit, quit on quitting. Stop giving up. Keep your eyes on the Lord and His Word. You cannot receive from God with your eyes on the calendar or the clock. Amen? And then finally, we're, we've landed now. We're pulling up to the terminal. Everybody say seed, seed. Time, time, harvest. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't lose heart, if we don't give up, if we don't throw in the towel, if we don't quit. How many times have you been tempted to quit? Judas gave up 53 days before the greatest revival the world had ever experienced. You're a believer. Everybody say, I'm a believer. Or how many of you are a believer? What do believers do? How long are you going to believe? You, how did you become a believer? Well, by believing what? Okay, the Word of God. You believe that, that uh, he that confesses Jesus has... If you confess Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. How many of you started believing like that? How many of you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? How many of you believe that you're going to heaven when you die? How many of you believe your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Okay, have you ever, did you witness that event and yet you still believe? Have, have you been to heaven? And, and yet you still believe? Is your, have you seen the book your name's written in? And yet you still believe? How long are you going to believe? Okay, well then why are you struggling? I mean, all, your very eternal existence is based on an event that happened that you didn't witness, a place you're going, you've never been in a book your name's written in that you've never seen, right? And yet you still believe? How long are you going to believe that? Well, then, then you're telling me you're struggling with a little bit of healing that you're believing and you haven't seen yet or a relational harmony or a, or a vision or, of a business or, or, a, or a ministry or, or finances. Are you, why are you struggling? You're believers. Amen. What do believers do? Believe. Well, have you ever doubted since you believed? You know what to do with the doubt? Just look at it. Say, John Osteen taught me this. I doubt you doubt. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guys, what can we do while waiting on our harvest to manifest? What can we do? Well, get your eyes off the calendar of the clock. Water the seed that's been planted by, by Thanksgiving, as Pastor Freddie told us this morning. <laughs> this was great, Freddie. You just... Set this up. Just be, be thankful. Here's the, uh, in, in everything the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. What's the will of God? Everything you're going through? No, giving thanks. Giving thanks. That's how you water the seed. And then another thing, two, three, three things, just, Water the seed that's been planted by thanking God. Then number two, help somebody else reap their harvest. Get involved by encouraging someone else or planting the word in someone else's heart. Amen? And then number five, and this kind of ties into, I mean, number three, uh, that this kind of ties into being thankful. Psalm 126, verse five, says we sow in tears, but we reap in joy. We reap in joy. How many of you want to reap a harvest? You need to start praising God. You need to start thanking God. 
You need, you, need to start, you need to change, you need to stop dipping yourself in pickle juice and, or vinegar, and, and you need to stop this long face about everything that's going wrong and, well, how are you doing? Well, I don't know. I guess God, I'm just not sure God loves me, and I just don't know. I'm having such a bad time. And, you know, listen, when Paul went through all that stuff on, and he got shipwrecked, they put him in jail, they, they beat him and they put him in, and he got shipwrecked and, and then he comes out and he's just doing, the, trying to do the will of God and he, gets, and he gets bit by a snake and he says, oh God, why'd you let this happen to me? I've just been following you and serving you and the devil's after me. And is that what he did? What did he do? He shook the beast off into the fire. He shook it off into the fire. What does that mean? How, how do you shake the beast off in the fire? You make much of the Lord and little of the devil. And you praise God. And with, with, we sow in tears. We reap in joy. And Word Life Church, God's got a great harvest for you. Individually, He's got a great harvest for you corporately. And I'm telling you, you haven't seen anything yet. But we've got to grow up. And we've got to prove to our pastors that, listen, it's uh, what they, their faithfulness is not in vain. And more importantly to the Lord, that God, what you call me to do, I will do. And I'm taking my thumb out of my mouth today. It's my, it's my exit from the spiritual nursery. I'm taking my toddler pants off. I'm putting my big boy and big girl pants on. And, and I am going to find out what God's Word says about my situation. And I'm going to be, I'm going to come back with a good report. I'm going to help other people receive their harvest. Amen. I'm, I'm going to be thanking God and watering that seed. And I will see a harvest. This test will turn out to a testimony. This trial, I'm going to the other side of it. Amen. I'm not dying in the storm. Amen. That storm's dying to me. And there's a revival on the other side of my storm. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for changing lives. And thank you, Father, for motivating us to get in your word and plant it in our hearts. And Father, I'm praying a harvest in Jesus' name for every person here in, in revelation of your word. Now, how many of you know you're born again? If you died tonight, you know you go to heaven, lift your hand real high. How many of you put your hands down and pray? How many of you could not lift your hand? You're not sure about your relationship with God. Guys, everything I'm talking about here only works when you've made a personal relationship with Jesus. Those who are watching online, those who are here, if you were to die tonight and stand before God, why, why and He asks you, why should I let you into heaven? What would you tell Him? Is it because you've done, you've done good works? You're, you're better than the bank robber or the person that's in jail or the drug dealer? That's, that doesn't get you to heaven, guys. It's only Jesus. And if you're not sure about your relationship with God today, but you want to be, I want to pray for you right where you're sitting. If that's you, just lift your hand real high and say, I want, I want to know. I want to be sure. I see that hand. Are there others? I see that hand. Uh, up, well, along with these that have lifted their hands. If you've been away from the Father's house, maybe you're born again, but you know, you've know you been wandering, you've been roaming, doing your, doing your own thing. And you say today, you know, I want to come back to Father's house and I, and I want to grow up. I want to be a, a, a child of God that's going to, that's going to be productive and, and, and yield my life to Jesus. I'm, I'm going to be all in today. If that's you, lift your hand. Praise God. Let's pray with these that have lifted their hands. Let's pray together. And, and I'll just say this after me. Uh, Father, I want to thank you, Father, thank you. For, the sacrifice of your son, for the sacrifice of your son, for his virgin birth, for his, virgin birth, for his, sinless, for his sinless life, and for his sacrifice, for, his sacrifice for, me for me on the cross. I give up, I give up. doing things my way. I yield to you. I give my life to you. I call on you, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. 
I believe with all of my heart God raised you from the dead. So according to your word, I'm now saved. I'm now a child of God because I trust in you and what you did for me. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I'm praying for every person that prayed that prayer. I pray that you quicken to their hearts, Lord, that something supernatural happened on the inside of them. That they're not just forgiven, they're, they're righteous, they're born again, and they're right with God. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to welcome you into the family of God in Jesus' name, and to this family, Word Life family, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give them a good hand. Okay. Now, you, you need to tell someone about the decision you made. Okay? You need to tell somebody and make yourself accountable to another Christian who can help you in your walk with God. If you don't have a home church, this is a great place uh, to, uh, to be a home, to, uh, to join and be a part of. God bless you guys.